all right YouTube so this is video number two today we're going to be installing some sound deadener and also we're going to be starting to install the speakers and locate a good spot for that amplified Bluetooth speaker head unit and also the subwoofer if you have not seen part one or video number one go check it out it's basically me removing the interior and then taking out the old main harness that's under the dash that has the fuse block and everything and then installing a new one so that's pretty much in there everything works so it's all good to go so now we're going to be moving on to first the sound deadener right now i haven't these are not in i'm just kind of testing everything out see what needs to be cut see what needs to be exposed um like i stated in the first video i do got some rust holes that i'll have to address in the future but for now we're going to do the right thing and we're just going to cover that up that way you don't see it you see what i'm saying i got some of these little uh, nubs or whatever for the floor mat that holds it in place so i gotta make sure i got a spot for that also want to make sure i leave a hole cut out for the uh, cab mounts so i do want to replace those at a later date right yeah i'm just right now just kind of laying everything out seeing how it's going to all fit so i think that's what i'm about to do right now just kind of get all the pieces out and start laying it out see what it's going to look like see what needs to be cut i should have enough i've got 18 pieces of these at 12 by 23 inches so we're still going to see how everything looks all right guys video number two let's do this all right so pretty much get the idea here I mean, a lot of trimming i'm gonna have to do like that corner like i stated earlier i gotta make sure i expose all these studs because that's what holds the uh, floor mat in place because this still has that factory style floor mat that's only goes from here to the firewall there so all this basically up under the seats just bare steel so in doing that i'm going to basically stop the mat this uh, sound deadening material just inside the seat bracket because when you open the door from basically this point out all this metal you see so i think it would look kind of silly if you know if all that's just right there um so that's how we're going to do that at some point at a later future down the line kind of thing maybe five years from now or so when i do the when I replace all this sheet metal and get this all 100% no rust, then I think I'm gonna do a full interior with carpet and everything, make this interior look a lot nicer. And then get a full sound deadening kit that'll seal all this up. And hopefully maybe by that point, I'll have the gas tank maybe under the bed or something so we can get rid of all this. But for now, we're doing it this way. All right, so far so good. Everything's laying out really nice. So far I've done, what was it, about four pieces. I had to cut one strip right there to kind of fit and sandwich in between here. Um, I think this is about where I'm gonna stop as far as where the seat bracket goes. So everything in will be covered up. More than likely I might have to pull the seat belts out, but that's no big deal. So this tool is a must. You gotta have this thing to, to really get this thing to, to lay down. So. All right, guys, I'm going to get back at it. So the next time you see this cab, more than likely all this sound deadener will be installed or most of it will be installed. So I'm going to get back at it, guys. You ever heard of that phrase? It's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to do it, you never forget. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That does not apply to roller skating. Ask me how I know. All right, there it is. Pretty got much got most of it in. The whole floor where the rubber mat goes is pretty much done. I got everything covered up. There's a couple of spots I may cut some scrap pieces and, and fill in the blanks, but for the most part, it's pretty much done. Looking pretty good. Got the hump done. This took several pieces and sections and trimming and stuff. And I took some scrap pieces, like that little section right there, kind of filled in the corners and stuff. But this was never meant to be 100% sealed. I mean, if I wanted to do this right, I would take everything out. 
you know but i'm just trying to achieve a little bit of sound deadening so if i can get 50 percent better sound quality in here maybe a little heat resistant then it was worth an extra 100 105 or six dollars or whatever this whole 18 piece kit cost so i think now we're going to move on to installing the speakers and one thing i kind of did was loosely test fit one of those panels it didn't fit very well over the uh the vent hole the vent door here so i'm thinking since that opening in this in the speaker panel itself matches the contour of the cab here i think this needs to come off you install a speaker all right guys so i stand corrected you will have to have your vent door in location on the cab for this speaker panel to fit because with those uh, molded bumps right there it clears this door track that the the handle for opening and closing the door travels in right now i got it open and the tension on that handle is holding this place holding this panel in perfect location so now i just got to pick and choose where i want to put all my mounting screws you see that recessed groove right there on the bottom of the cab floor right before you get to the rust that's why i'm going to run my speaker wires through and then once I do that, then it'll go somewhere to the radio. I'll just route it through the floor to the, uh, to the uh, Bluetooth radio, and that'll be done. Well, there it is, guys. There's the driver's side speaker panel pretty much in place. Went ahead and used three mounting screws. I put one here. I put one down here. And then I put one right there. I can probably put a fourth one in here because you can see that's kind of moving. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But I doubt I will. It's a pretty secure way it is now. I don't think I'm going to need one back here anywhere. It doesn't seem to be moving much. The door opens okay. It does kind of rub right there in that little corner. It's kind of already kind of chafing it a little bit. But um, I don't use this door very often, if at all. So I'm not too worried about that. I didn't notice I'm going to have a hard time with my foot to reach this uh, high beam switch. But uh, it is what it is. Nothing I can really do about that. All right. So I got the uh, driver speaker panel back out. And I went ahead and enlarged the holes to quarter inch. That way it gives me a little wiggle room if I need to adjust it. Plus, it helps it a little. E it makes it a little easier to locate the uh, drilled hole in the uh, in the cab itself. Plus, with the washer that I'm using, it covers it up. However, if you're doing a speaker panel like this and you don't need a hole that large, or you're doing it something differently, then you do how you want to do it. So far, I think three holes is going to work out great. So here's the passenger side, and what I think I'm going to do here to get it pretty close to the ballpark of the same holes and location and we'll sandwich these two together as close as possible making them about as close as I can get them it's not that easy and then what you can do is take a little pick or so now what I can do is drill through these holes with the eighth inch bit. Make sure your finger's not on the other side. All right, so now I got the eighth inch holes made. What I'm gonna go do now before I enlarge these holes is I'm gonna put this on the truck itself, get it as close to where it needs to be as possible, and I might use this pick as well to go ahead and scribe into the uh, metal of the cab before I enlarge these holes. That way I can get a nice little hole in the center. That way when I enlarge it, then I'll have the slight wiggle room if I need it to do to adjust the speaker panel if it needs to be adjusted. So I'm gonna go do that and we'll go from there. All right, so the passenger side speaker panel's in. And I'll be quite honest, the fit and finish on it is horrible. My OCD is kicking in big time because the alignment of that speaker panel compared to the rubber is just horrible and i even had to grind this corner to get it to to go a little bit forward 
because if I pull this side towards towards me, that corner is going to be protruding out, and you have to take into account for that seal plate because it's going to go right right in this area. So if I do do that, I'll have to trim all this plastic off and try to make it look as decent as possible. So, you know, as far as the alignment on the hole, I mean, it's it's not all that great either. I mean, you can see the, you can see the screw hole there. That line's okay on the sides, and this part's okay. I just, I you know, I don't know. I don't know if they had Stevie Wonder design these or, or what the deal is, but they just don't fit very well according to my standards anyways. I may have to put a screw here because this this vent door handle is not even all the way closed. This is adjustable, so I may have to do that, but I may have to put a screw here to kind of hold that in place. And in doing so, I may have to even trim the backside of this lip of the plastic so it'll sit a little bit more flush. But for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward. Got the speaker wire unraveled. Went ahead and did that side. And it's the same issue on that side. It's no different. The alignment is horrible. So, but we're gonna we're gonna move forward. I may mess with the uh fitment on that off camera and then see how it turns out. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and start wiring up the boss radio and get these speakers wired up. Also got the two speakers that are on, on the dash too. There's some couple of speakers up there that are Polk Audio, I believe. They're real old speakers, but they, they work and they sound great. So I'm gonna wire those two up along with these two, and then we'll go ahead and start connecting all the power wires to make this thing come on. So you see where I'm at? So I'm about to get to it. All right, so look what came in the mail today. A six piece firewall grommet set for the 60 to 66. There's the part number from classicparts.com. These were the main two I was after. But I went ahead and got the whole set that way I could have it. As you can tell, they're they're proprietary to the to the vehicle because they got those notches and everything, but I mean, I'm squeezing. So we will no longer be needing those. I think that one's for the parking brake cable, I believe. The windshield washer hoses. That may be speedometer cable, I'm not 100% sure. And I believe this one's going to be for the blower motor. Or one wire. It's a big grommet for one wire. Anyways, there's the air vent seals. I think I'm going to re, re restore those things at the very end. But for now, I got the seals ready to go. This was also in the box. If you're in the area and you're coming to go be coming to this show, I think I'll be going there. C10 National. It's a pretty good show. It's at the uh, Texas Motor Speedway, so it's all concrete. Hopefully it doesn't rain that day. Otherwise, I will not be there. But other than that, I'll be out there if you want to stop by and say hi. All right, so for the front speakers, what I'm trying to do is hide the wiring behind this mat. There's a little window kind of folding door here that was so brittle it just broke off but i got the i guess in, technically the right speaker because there's two four by sixes in the dash next to each other so this is the right speaker wire and how i got it through was with a piece of scrap coat hanger just push that through there we go up oh, popped out right there tape the wires together like that make another piece of tape all right see if i can get to come through this time I'm trying to gently pull come on baby it's caught on something there there we go it oh my light fell over and just pull it through and that's that and you got the wires hidden all right youtube so i wanted to stop and take a moment because i was kind of getting ahead of myself here and show y'all where i'm at so i pretty much got the eight gauge cable 
this blue cable here it's already routed through the firewall and going to the battery I got a piece of heat shrink right there to kind of hide some of that blue once everything's done been using some of this 3m tape it's for air uh, for duct work I had this in the uh, laundry room it's working out great to hold the the, uh, the cables down or the wiring electrical tape kind of coming up peeling so it's not really working out very well so I'm gonna switch it over to that aluminum tape not 100% finished with the wiring it's not connected to the battery battery it's the last thing I'm gonna do but it is officially through where I want it the only thing I need to do is start just kind of zip tie everything make sure it's all nice and secure so I can call that good now let's go back to the cab here I've already had the seat in place because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room and try to locate where I wanted the uh, sub and the uh, Bluetooth radio power amplifier there along with the fuse block and there is a ton of real estate under the seat for this stuff so you could you could do this long ways however the uh, switches and wiring and all this stuff was really really close to the uh, seat bracket so that wouldn't it would work it just I didn't like it. it was just too close to all that stuff so that's why I didn't do that now if you noticed here I got some spacers under the subwoofer because I noticed the magnet was sticking to the floor and I'm not a car audio guy so I don't know if that would affect the performance of the subwoofer or not or affect it in any way so to alleviate that I came up with these spacers which I already had in the garage and luckily enough I had four identical sizes so that's what I did to space the subwoofer away from the floor I already got it bolted down and secured same thing with the Bluetooth radio I just got one on each corner I didn't do all four corners that's not going to be vibrating the uh, and the same thing with the fuse block plenty of real estate for this and it's nice because now all my wires can be equally distributed from left to right and and then obviously the center speakers and I'll be honest with you I really don't like that this is the how it's going to look under the seat and I think if I'm not 100% if I'm not mistaken I think they make a full-size floor mat that goes all the way to the maybe to the back of here or something if they do I'm going to be getting that because I'd like to finish this off I have six more sheets of this sound dating material and which will be plenty to finish this floor off under the seat and plus that rubber would help with sound deadening as well if they don't then this is it's going to stay like this because with the seat on here and you don't see none of the aluminum you don't see none of that shiny stuff obviously the floor mat's going to cover the front so that's plenty uh that's you're not going to see any of that i think i stated earlier that i wanted to make sure i had plenty of slack going to my speakers and I think that's going to be enough right there move that out of the way see if that light might help should be plenty of slack there if I need to take this panel off and access the back of the speaker I do kind of want to I'm not going to I don't know what I'm going to put there maybe a piece of uh, sound editing material to try to kind of cover this up this rust there's some something sharp down in here I don't know what it is and so I don't want that to cut my wire maybe try to cover that hole um, until I can repair all this metal which I will do in the future at some point same thing I still got to finish wire uh, taping off the wire on that side and I need to change that electrical tape out because it's not sticking very well to the sound editing material so I'm going to change it out to this stuff here all right so who says you can't learn something new every day? So basically I'm here finalizing the wiring and I noticed I was testing everything out and every time you key on or key off technically the ignition switch, the subwoofer goes thump. And I was like, I really don't care for that. I don't, first of all, I don't know if it's damage, I would damage this. And second, it's just annoying. So I did a little search on the interwebs and found that uh, if you use a relay to send the 12 volt signal to the remote wire 
instead of the letting the radio or for for my uh, purposes this bluetooth powered amplifier if you bypass that and just let the relay send the 12 volt signal it eliminates that when you turn it off because apparently this is shutting off before this is so it's creating that thump effect from what i understand reading on the uh the uh, interwebs there so i don't know if this will pick it up but i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on you'll hear it chime there it goes give it a second and then we'll turn it off i don't know if the camera picked that thump up but that's what i'm dealing with i've already tested out this relay here and that went away plus the subwoofer still works because basically all the remote wire is doing from the radio is just sending 12 volts like a key on ignition switch so bypassing that and using a relay eliminates that you're just doing it through a relay so i'm gonna go ahead and wire this relay up now i got more wiring to do and i just about got this thing buttoned up went ahead and did my ghetto patch repair there make sure no wires were snagging in there got all my slack there i think that side's gonna be okay so that should be okay i may trim that uh sharp jagged edge off but other than that there's no holes on that side so i'm gonna go ahead and wire up this relay i think go ahead and get this interior back in it so i can finally test everything out see how it's gonna sound it's all in there got all my wiring about halfway the way i want it not the greatest wiring guy in the world but it's secure it ain't going nowhere a little 40 amp relay kind of taped to the fuse holder really didn't want to i didn't know what to do with that so that's what i came up with it's all hidden secure still debating on this fuse block here i don't really i mean it's okay but i don't know if i want to i don't know if i like that so um forgot to mention this thing does come with a usb charging cable or charging uh yeah charging cable port there so that'd be nice to charge the phone so now i gotta get my wife help me slide this seat in it's gonna be kind of a challenge because everything's in place so i gotta watch my step i don't want to step on the wiring harness or or anything that could break so we're about to get that in there and then once the seat's installed see how see what everything looks like and then uh show y'all all the real estate that's up under the seat so you can see how what it's going to look like and then we'll turn this bad boy on and try to find something to play all right seats back in seal plates are in had to do a little bit of trimming on these corners where the floor mat to follow the contour I had to trim back the uh insulation but other than that everything's pretty much hidden except for this area so, like I stated earlier, I'm really hoping I can find a full floor mat that hides all this. And plus, I can finish off all the all the, the bottom of the floor and really get this thing sound dead and nicely. But for now, it's going to stay like this until I can find something to better hide this or just not worry about it. So, I already got a light up under the seat. And as you can tell, look at all that real estate. All kinds of room up under the seat. Especially with that subwoofer. I was a little concerned, but nope. Not anymore. That's nice. And see the direction I have it. You have easy access to the switches and the wiring. That fuse if you need to access it. If you turned it sideways, you'd be very close to this bracket. Especially this uh, lever that's in the way. Speaking of which, is the reason why I had to pull. There's the one thing I had to do. I don't remember if I mentioned earlier, but I'm going to state it now. You have to take that rod that goes from the driver's side seat bracket to the passenger. Basically, when you release, push that lever to, to pull the seat forward, it pulls. It's supposed to, that rod's supposed to pull this lever here. And it was never, ever, ever doing that. I don't know what was wrong with the rod. It may have been stretched over time, but it never did it no matter what I did. So I basically removed it and because it it couldn't be in there with the sub in there so that's gone i'll have to deal with that at a later date if i want to make some kind of lever on this side uh, let's see if i can get the camera in here so there's that fuse block 
I am going to get rid of that and go to a three-way eight gauge junction block that I found on Amazon. It's made by Stinger. I'm going to eliminate that fuse block there and get a fuse holder near the battery and I'll show you what that looks like. Now this is this one right here is a six gauge 80 amp fuse holder that's uh, protecting my uh, dual compressors for the air ride. So I'm going to get one that's eight gauge probably 60 amp or so. I don't think I need 80 amps to protect the sub. So 60 amps should be fine for the eight gauge wiring. So for now, I didn't trim it down. I just kind of got it there, tucked it out of the way so it doesn't rub on anything. So we're good to go there until I get that stuff, which I'll probably be ordering tonight. So we got the driver's side here. Same thing, I kind of had to trim that corner because there was I had it more squared off there. Trim that back, now you really don't see that. Kind of cleaned up my wiring up under the dash. Doesn't look too, too tidy, but it looks pretty clean under there. And from this angle, you don't see any wires hanging down. So that's nice. All right, real quick update. So went ahead and eliminated the 80 amp fuse holder that I had going at first. Nothing wrong with it. Actually, pretty well made piece. Nothing wrong with it. I just, it was, those boots wasn't really sealing off the corners of this um, fuse. So basically what I went to is a three-way, eight gauge, all the way around junction block, and it's made by Stinger. Take this little plastic cover that barely snaps on. That's the brand though, got this at Amazon for, I don't know, 15, 14, 15 dollars, wasn't too much. More than likely made in China. But it's working out, I've already tested everything. And it's much more, everything's more covered all the insulation of the wiring's in there. So I really like this piece a little bit better, even though that cover's not snapping on very well. Hope that's not an issue. Tidied up the wiring. Looks pretty nice, so, or it looks decent anyways. So I noticed last week when I was going on a little cruise, I just wanted to kind of hear what the st stereo sounded like while driving. And it sounds really good, but I kept hearing a vibration under the seat. So basically, I just chalked it up to probably one of the spare tire tools or something rattling over there. So when I got back home, turned it on, and I was trying to isolate the sound, and come to find out this thing was vibrating and making the sound. And it was shaking pretty pretty bad because of these spacers. And remember earlier, I was saying I was using these spacers because I noticed the magnet was pulling or kind of attracting itself to the metal of the floor. And I didn't know if that was gonna be an issue. So what I did is did a quick inter interweb search and found out 99% of the people were saying there's no issue with the speaker magnet being next to any sort of metal. It's not gonna affect the sound or the longevity of the speaker. So I feel pretty confident that that's not gonna be an issue now. But what I did do just for comfort and peace of mind is I took a thin piece of rubber, basically a roll I had laying around for whatever reason. I don't know what I used it for. Basically, the stuff's like maybe, I don't know, 16th of an inch, maybe 330 seconds. So I basically kind of trimmed it to fit and just securely mounted the subwoofer to the floor, tested it out, tested it out, and no more vibrations coming from this area. So I am much more pleased with that. The last thing I gotta deal with is this fuse holder. 60 amp holder from Amazon. I think I paid six dollars for it. But I spent I don't know how many hours on, on the internet trying to find a fuse holder that was something that I would that just seemed like it was made and durable. And that's the only thing I can come up with. I, I I really don't care for these kind of things. I look a little cheap and cheesy, but this is all I can come with come up with. So if you are a car audio guy and you know something that'll work a whole lot better and look a lot better than this, hit me up in the comments and let me know. So I'd love to change this out to something a little bit more durable and better looking. So I'm gonna get back at it. We'll get the seat back in place and we'll move on to pretty much wrapping this video up. And we'll go ahead and do a little sound clip and let y'all hear what this is gonna sound like as best as the GoPro Hero 8 camera will pick up.
But overall, I am very pleased with everything that I installed in this video. I'm going to go ahead and put links in the description. That way, if you're interested in anything I installed, you can click on that link and it'll take you to the site that carries it. The most impressive thing, honestly, is that subwoofer. I can't believe how much bass it puts out for, for its size. And at only $100, can't beat it. I don't know how well this GoPro Hero 8 is going to pick up the sound, but... I wish y'all could be here to hear it. It sounds really great for what this stereo system is. And you see all the room under the seat. So if you still have your gas tank behind your seat and you don't plan on moving it or it's going to be down the road before you do, then you saw all the room. You have plenty of room to mount whatever you want to mount under this seat. The only disappointing thing is the speaker panel fitment issue. I really, I'm disappointed in that. I think they should fit a little bit better. But overall, they look nice and they sound good. So off camera, I'll probably mess with that at a later date. And the only other thing I wish I had that I don't have is there's no EQ settings in the powered amplifier itself. So there's no bass or treble and there's no fade from like front to rear speakers, which I wish I had because I know the sound coming from those jazz speakers is pretty intense at times. So yeah, they tickle the drums, let me tell you. So I wish I could send that volume more to the uh, panel speakers. But overall, for for what it is, how compact it is, and at 500 watts, it's a little, pretty powerful unit. I mean, you're getting 125 watts to each channel or each speaker. So when you turn this thing up, you get volume as much as you can handle. So sound editing material, I think, has worked out great. Uh, I haven't driven this truck with the windows up, but I can tell it's helped. Cause I don't hear the muffler sound when I'm cruising down the road as loud as I used to. It's a lot more mellow in the cab. So overall, very pleased. I still have not been able to find anybody that sells a full floor mat. So this interior may stay the way it is until I do the rust repair and then do a full interior the way I want it. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up on this video. The next video I'm going to be doing was going to be actually the uh, cruise control but we're gonna take that video and we're gonna we're gonna set it aside we're gonna we're gonna put it over here we'll get to it we'll get to it the next video i'm gonna upload is going to be an upgrade on this truck hmm what would i be upgrading on this truck guys i'm gonna leave you on suspense if you think you know what it is comment below throw a guess out there who knows you might get it right all right, it's a nice day today. I think we'll take this truck out for a cruise. So like, subscribe, and until then, thanks for watching.